Hello, welcome back to uh, Motion Design for VR, AR, and Mixed Reality. Today we're going to talk about Avatar. So, my name is Lou, and I gave this presentation about two weeks ago, or a month ago, at the Cinema 4D meetup. And so, I'm just going to go through my process and some things that I think you guys should learn about when thinking about avatars and virtual reality. So, let's get to it. So I've been doing virtual reality for two, three years now. And so I've also helped design mixed reality experiences as well. And so when I initially started trying to build avatars, I really was thinking about real time storytelling with an actor. Um, and also how a story can change dynamically based upon the actor and the user's interactions. And so presence is a really big part of that and how I perceive myself and how I can gather things or I can look at myself and relate myself to the other character. So obviously we want to create as much presence in VR, AR, and mixed reality as possible. Not as much as in uh, mixed reality where we're just trying to interact with the world, at least at this point, at least from what I've seen. Um, if you're looking for non-linear storytelling um, videos and how to even explore that, uh, definitely check Visionary VR. And like I said, the uh, presentation will be below and uh, you guys can check it out as well. Um, so technology for tracking right now. There's the Oculus Touch, the Vive controllers, there's Final IK, and there's a bunch of other scripts that allow you to use inverse kinematics. So basically guessing where the point, this is the controller, and then it just guesses upon how you rig the character to see where it is, you know, like where the hand should be. And then you can also offset it and do things of that nature. But if you're using things like the Oculus, or excuse me, the Vive Tracker, which is right here, we have three of them. So um, we can do like maybe some more accurate uh, IK than if we were not to have these. But basically it'll guess where your feet are and give you more sense of presence. If you're only using the Vive controllers, it just guesses where your feet are and it does like a weird mov movement, which we'll see in a second. It's not, it's kind of this good enough principle, which we'll get on later. Um, also, there's a perception neuron suit. So this is the stuff, um, this is a, like a medium to higher end. It's probably like a lower end motion capture suit. Uh, but for us, it's a higher end if you're developing for virtual reality. Not everyone's going to have it. It's more of like a setup um, demo experience. And so with that, it's a, a 32 IMU sensors. And so basically, you would create presence um, with that. Um, there's also the Roku suit, which is another motion capture suit, which we'll be uh, having in a couple weeks. And I hope... Um, to get that soon, it's supposed to be better than the Neuron and their support is really awesome. So hopefully we'll get that in a couple of weeks and I will get to show you guys. Uh, Breckel is basically um, a cheaper ver a cheaper connect version of motion capture. It's not real time. And so a lot of my purpose is like real time capture. So if you like the perception Neuron, you can pre-bake animations and stuff, but I'm really trying to just make it happen with you in the experience. Also depth kit, it's basically like a hologram video. That's a terrible way to describe it, but basically it's volumetric video. And if you're uh, interested in storytelling, that's another way to do tracking. If uh, like in a video sense, I guess. Um, so current avatars, um, so there's like basically three models right now. And so there's the simplest, there's the good enough principle that I talked about. And so virtual reality, there's a lot of like like if it's just good enough, it gives me presence because a lot of people even haven't tried VR yet. And so they're really just experiencing it for the first time. So even using the controllers as gesture tools really creates a sense of immersion. And if you move them fast or if you do something silly with them, people really understand what you're trying to articulate because you're really only trying to articulate motions with the avatars. And that's really your goal. Um, Obviously, the simplest is like good, really great, and it, it can give you a lot, but it doesn't really send, give you like the real sense of presence because it doesn't give you the body and stuff. So, like the medium quality is using more IK stuff rather than controller-based hand. Like if you were to have a hand and you grab objects, but then like Job Simulator uses the hand principle where you have a hand and then it transport, it, it gets, it goes away, and then you can pick up the object and look at it. So it just depends on your interactive model as well. But most people are leaning towards, I would say, the second one right now, the medium, because people are really starting to like using the IK and the solvers out there are becoming much better. And also people are expecting more high-end experiences right now. Um, also, it shows a little bit of body gesture, like I like to say, and it's really, the IK is the good enough experience right now. Eventually it will not be good enough, but right now it's awesome. And the solvers will probably catch up to the motion capture suits as well. Um, so the most high end is like what we've been trying to use is the motion capture suits. And so by that, I mean using the perception neuron with the 32 um, setup, which you'll see in a second, but it really gives you good articulation of body language, which is something lacking in IK because you really can't show how you're moving in a, in a, in a proper manner, unless you have multiple vibe trackers and things. If you're using a motion capture suit, you can really get the IK. Like if you're really happy or sad, you can really tell by like bending over and stuff. Um, 
Right now, it's hard to network uh, multiple neuron suits right now. If you guys have found a solution, I would love to chat with you. But right now, currently, I'm not sure it's possible. But if you use OptiTrack or Viacom, you can definitely um, network them and they'll be under one, um, one, one, under one tracking system, which is ideal, you know, um, if you were to do that. And so here's some more example avatars. This just depends on your style. Most people are barely showing um, uh, facial animations and stuff because there's not an IR sensor which will be able to read um, your facial animations. And so there's only a couple of companies really doing that right now. Um, Facewear, Dynamic, IX. And so they'll be in the link below as well, but I'll show a slide with that. But articulation of how you design your characters um, is really important. And for us, it's really been about low poly, trying to create like a low poly feel and, you know, create like a sense of wonder by using low poly and simple animations. And so here's some examples that we've been working on. And so uh, the bottom one is uh, IK using in Unity. And so basically um, using the hands and using uh, hand gestures and stuff. And then the top is the perception neuron. So obviously you get a lot more articulation with the hands and it's much more, it's really great with, um, when you get it working and you create some magical moments, especially with body language and stuff. But over time, the suit tends to drift, but it just depends on the, how the suit's feeling at that day. So definitely, if you're going to mass release, definitely go for IK. And if you're doing a film festival stuff, that's what we've been leaning towards is using the top uh, perception rod. So what about facial tracking? I talked about this a little bit, but here's some more solutions. Uh, I've been using facewear. It's been wonderful. Um, yeah, it's been really great. Um, yeah, I, I haven't had any experience with it, and I got picked it up, and I was like, okay, I'm just going to do this. And basically, have a set of um, predetermined uh, faces that you make from the rig that you have, and then uh, it does the animation. So uh, check out our Trump piece, which I'll put a video here, of uh, just an example of our projects. And so here's some more resources. Definitely check out, uh, if you had to check out one, um, Mikhail Gustav, a beautiful Unity, uh, Unity scenes. And if you haven't learned anything about Unity, definitely check it out because it will give you a great ramp up. And if you watch the Firewatch video as well, you'll definitely learn how to uh, create Unity scenes uh, in a beautiful manner. Also, I would definitely recommend using the ambient inclusion or buying it as well. I know it's kind of sucky that you have to buy these plugins to make it really look good, but trust me, it will help you in the long run. Well, thanks guys for watching this video. It might be a little long, but if you guys have any more questions or want me to articulate things better, let me know in the comments below. Thanks and have a great day.